find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 99, the last stop on the road to 100. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters, video producer here in the Pittsburgh area, working some local wrestling groups and uh, doing some documentaries, including, yes, finding, uh, I almost said Finding Virgil, uh, Legend of the Virgil and his traveling uh, merchandise table, amongst others. Uh, with me, as usual, from San Antonio, Texas, he's the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling down that way. He is Eamon to please on the Twitters, Eamon Payton. So close, Sorg, the triple digits. So, this is this is a real thing that's happening. So I, I, I can't believe it. I'm very excited. So close, and I, I'm sorry your shot was so close to your face. I fixed that on there, too. And also, <laughs> also uh, special guest number one joining us from California. Uh, he is uh, the guy behind uh, the uh, Chikara in 15 Minutes or Less podcast, and he's um, all around. You see his name floating around all over the Wrestling Mayhem Show universe. He is Alex Cars. How you doing, sir? Hey, good. I I did it. I've cashed in my golden opportunity. I'm on the internet, so. <laughs> yeah, that's Great. right. That's right. And also with us, our guest honor of tonight is returning to the show, Bryce Remsburg. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride, guys. Only only ninety nine. Next the next next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you get to a thousand, give me a call. All right, I'll, I'll come back around again. I, I want to. I want to be the big monumental one, not just the the on deck circle next time. That's good. I just but thanks for having me. We just kind of figured you didn't want to share the stage with a, a team that calls themselves the STDs. Um, oh yeah, correct. I, I, I don't want. I don't want. I, I want nothing to do with that. You know, I don't want to be anywhere near that. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> no exactly. one really does. <laughs> no, no. Well, what does that stand for in their in their world? Uh, what se- we think it does? Sexy, talented dudes. Oh, I was going to say saves the day in a Uh-oh. band from about uh, 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get into the uh, in, straight into the STDs next week. But of course, this is the Indie Mayhem Show. Please check us out, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and Daily Motion. No, not Daily Motion. We're not in there. Anyways, there's some other stuff on there, too, though, for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, you can also follow at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Follow Wrestling Mayhem Show on the Facebooks as well. Let us know uh, anybody, uh, any, any thoughts on Indie Wrestling anything you think we're missing and of course uh drop us a line to good times at wrestling show.com or the hotline 412-206-WMS0 big thanks of course to basic sickness for the intro and outro of music of pittsburgh Oris- original check them out at basic sickness.com so let's get into it it is uh it is the uh, the big finale coming up this week right amen yeah, well, well big finale i got i so it's right there's a big finale last week uh uh, that we definitely wanted to have Bryce on to talk about, and that uh, of course was Shakara Pro's season finale, uh, their uh, their big top banana event that was uh, at the ECW arena this past weekend. Definitely a big reason why I wanted to have you, Bryce, on. So we talk about that because uh, it seems, and then going into you know a few days later, there still seems to be a lot of buzz coming from uh, uh, the Saturday's event. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the 2300 Arena, please, Eamon. We've been instructed <laughs> very specifically in all of our social media, says the 2300 Arena, because this place, you know, was known for one thing many years ago, but for some reason they keep trying to rebrand themselves and host boxing <laughs> events. Or, but whatever. The, the, the ECW Arena, which looks way You're different basically. than it did. Yes, we had, a, we had a big night on Saturday. Um, many have said it was a return to form of sorts of all of, you know, the, uh, the big Chikara events held at the arena. But a lot of those events, um, you know, King of Trees King of 2011, King of Trees 2009, High Noon, um, all of them featured special guest stars. And it was kind of cool that, you know, despite maybe uh, some would say not having our strongest uh, output of a year, uh, we did manage to have such a home run of a show with all of our in-house talent. Uh, no, no, no guest stars, just our own storytelling, our own guys. And uh, the response was amazing. And like you said, there's still people talking about it. And uh, with a wing and a prayer, the, uh, the, the event will be available tomorrow uh, for everybody to enjoy. I know the, uh, the editors are working overtime, putting touches in, um, and it's, it's, it's getting close to being ready Hopefully tomorrow, definitely by the end of the week, uh, everyone can enjoy Top and In. I know there's already already been several hundred pre-orders, which is really really awesome. So I can't wait for everyone cool. to uh, to share it. Um, I saw some of the clips, and 
a lot of the times when you have this great feeling about it, you know what I'm talking about, you guys that are around live wrestling, it feels awesome, you watch it again, it, it's cool on video, but it doesn't feel the same, but I, I watched a good portion of the event on uh, video Sunday while I was going over to watch to help edit, and uh, it's it, it holds up, like it's just as powerful, like I pretty much wanted to watch the entire event again two days in a row, like I'm really, really excited for everyone to see it. Um, Fire Ant and Soldier Ant's match made people cry, like, which is crazy <laughs> that there were fans crying because guys that are, you know, animatronic ants were hugging. Um, like, that's a real testament to our storytelling. It was really powerful. And the big news, um, well, the big news for me was an Archibald, Archibald Peck sighting. It's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Uh, that's but uh, it's always great, very exciting. Uh, but the big news, which is the one that I've already done like three interviews with newspapers about and stuff, is that um, <laughs> Chikara is now home to the um, the first female primary champion in professional wrestling history. Um, you know, China held the Intercontinental title, and I'm sure Deborah held the European title or something crazy uh, during the <laughs> Attitude Era. Uh, I've lost track. But uh, no female has ever held the primary championship in a male-dominated promotion in professional wrestling history. And that is uh, Princess Kimberly is now the grand champion of Chikara. She won it on Saturday night. Uh, she's amazing. She's well-deserving. It's very exciting. And I think it um, uh, leaves a lot of excitement to come in uh, season 16 when it starts in January. Definitely. And looking at your, uh, looking at the Chikara sort of roster now and how things are shaping up, I mean, you have Princess Kimberly, who is the current uh, grand champion. Heidi Lovelace as well, the current Young Lions Cup champion. You even have, a lot of, of, of fresher, uh, I don't want to say fresher, but newer talents, I would yep. say, like NRG with the Campiones. Uh, mm -hmm. yep. It seems like the, you know, the the newer talents that are coming through Inspire Pro, or Inspire Pro, Chikara Pro, excuse me. Close, are making, close. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, are making big waves is what I mean to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, there, and there's more on the way. Um, we, we, we changed Wrestle Factories this year. And, uh, you know, there were times where there were there were three or four students in the pipeline at the Russell Factory, but we changed the system around where it's, it's based off of improv comedy. There's like a 101 level. Uh, if you complete the 101 level and keep going, you sign up for the 201 level. It's much more affordable. It's like seven weeks. It's like two and a half hours, like every Sunday night for seven weeks. And uh, because of that, which is really awesome, we now have 36 students enrolled in the uh, in the Chikara program right now. Not, not saying they're all going to debut or any of them are going to debut anytime soon. Uh, but there are, there are 36 humans, um, several ladies, as a matter of fact, more than one lady uh, in the pipeline. So uh, exciting times coming, yes. Um, sometimes maybe in, in, in baseball speak or maybe they say this in football too, you know, a rebuilding year perhaps. Uh, but there's a lot of exciting things to come. And uh, with, with uh, Princess Kimberly leading, oh, he's had enough, he's leaving. Uh, with, Princess Kimberly <laughs> leading, with Princess Kimberly leading the charge, I think there's a lot of excitement uh, to come in season 16. Awesome. I, um, I, I gotta say, uh, oh, sorry, Amen, but uh, uh, it was—it's the first wrestling uh, school I saw that had a, a Cyber Monday sale uh, on her training. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> that was kind of interesting. Yep. So. Yep. 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 It's true. It's all true. That's always. That's always nice. Um, going also to like some of the stuff that happened at uh, at Top Banana. Uh, you mentioned uh, Princess Kimberly winning the championship, but also I guess sort of spawned from I guess one of the big things that's happened all season for you guys, which is the uh, Challenge of the Immortals. And, and the finals of, of that tournament help being held at uh, Top Banana, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know the story that was told, like you know, with you know Princess Kimberly and Jervis Codbelly and most ice creams kind of being right. the, uh, the lovable losers of sorts, and then making their yeah. way up and 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 eventually winning it all. How how with how everything came together? How did you feel uh, with the end of a? I mean, a tournament that lasted pretty much the whole year. Yeah, it did. It started in March. Uh, there were 90 matches, 90 <laughs> professional wrestling matches uh, led to the final. And I, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the, the finals were supposed to be Dasher's dugout against uh, mm -hmm. the wrecking crew, but they vacated all their points. So the crowd and court just kind of fluked into this. Um, they were technically the third place team. Um, so it might be interesting to hear what, um, you know, Heidi, like that, like what happened to Kim on Saturday, like that, that was that could have been Heidi's spot in theory, sure. if, if, if Dash's dugout could have beaten the wrecking crew. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to keep an eye on. Um, but yeah, they, they, they vacated all their points, the crown and court. They were in last place in July. And uh, in, by the time the tournament ended in November, they were in third place. They got the chance. They were the underdogs. They lost all their matches, I think with the uh, wrecking crew all year. And uh, they, they pulled one out when it, when it counted the most, they pulled it out. Uh, 
uh, Princess Kimberly uh, German suplexed all four members of the Wrecking Crew in sequence, and then uh, pinned Blast, Mc, Blast McMassive with the Alligator Clutch, which is a move that a pinning combination that she has that no one has ever kicked out of. Uh, she's pinned Fire Ant with it. She's pinned Drew Gulak with it. She's pinned Ophidian with it. Um, all year long, she's been winning with it. And the, and the crazy thing is, the scary part in a way. Um, is that's not the move she won the title with. She won the title with the Chikara special uh, mm-hmm. submission move. Um, every time the Grand Championship of Chikara has changed hands, it's been via the Chikara special. Uh, so maybe she she maybe she had that in her back pocket, but uh, you know now she has two moves that are really hard to beat. So uh, I, I, I uh, anticipate a a uh, given the dominance that she had through the back part of the year, I uh, would not be surprised to see a long title reign for Princess Kimberly. Definitely. Uh, as well, back, and, and also just, you know, while we're thinking about it, Jervis Cottonbelly and Los Ice Creams also still have their golden opportunities. You know, they, she yeah. cashed hers in right away. She was, had a, saw a great opportunity. Hollow could have just been in the toughest match of his career. He'd been out there for 25 minutes against Icarus and Eddie Kingston. You know, she picked her spot, a very wise spot. Um, she only had her coins for about a half an hour. Uh, but Jervis and the Ice Creams, you know, there's, they don't expire. There's no time limit on them. So they can, they can, uh, do what they wish with them when they wish to do it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, going back to the, the the challenge of the immortals, and and obviously, uh, there are a lot of topics I guess in modern day wrestling is the whole idea of of long term storytelling or long term stories. How difficult would you say it was to sort of you know see something that's starting in March and 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 to cap it off you know at, at yeah. this big event at the end of the year? How much how much work goes into that? A ton. Uh, Literal Excel sheets and literal, um, you know, like you you need that because Mm because every team had to face every other team twice. So that's, you know, um, we figured out this algorithm in like January. Um, Every team (laughs) faces other team twice. That's that's uh, every team has to have 18 matches. It takes two teams to make a match. 18 times five is 90. I know this is getting really exciting. I know right now. Really, uh, um, it's like a, it's like a PWG music video, pretty much what we're talking about right now. Uh, but yes, it's, it's tricky. And then in the end when it's like, Oh, we have to have this match on this date. It's a matter of, you know, a lot of people that work for Chicago work for other promotions. You have to make sure they're here for a day. You got to, you know, make sure this person ends up in Minneapolis on a Thursday. There's a lot of logistics involved. Um, in it and then you know someone gets hurt someone gets uh we should have learned our lesson with the 12 large summit we tried that back in 2011 uh brody lee got injured um amasis got it it was a mess it was a mess like just we 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 limped to the end of that tournament uh i think claudio got signed in the middle of the year and left us uh it it was it was crazy but anyhow somehow some way we got there the uh everyone ended up with the, the 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 results everyone seemed to be pleased with it and uh um, well, I would never say never. I don't. Th- we're not going to be doing it again next year. Let's. Say. I was going to say if this is going to be a, a yearly it, thing. It's <laughs> not going to be a yearly thing. It, it becomes. Um, uh, I mean, when you're at you know match fifty three out of ninety, it's it's like I've never run a marathon. God knows I've never run a marathon. But I, <laughs> I imagine if I were to ever run a marathon, you know, the, the beginning's exciting and it's starting. And when you're getting to the close, it's exciting because you can see the end. But there's a big chunk in the middle where it's kind of hard to like really wrap your brain around it and, and feel like it. But I mean, in reality, every match matters. Every, the result of every match match matters. And it's uh, very complicated, but I think for a lot of the guys involved and some of the fans, it became a big thing to wrap brains around one match at a time. So um, mm-hmm. look forward to that seven DVD comp coming your way. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I'm hoping. Yeah. Uh, 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 going back to uh, to Top Banana, uh, one of the things you also mentioned was the uh, the big uh, colony showdown between Fire yeah. and Soldier Ant, and that was a that was probably the the other big match on the card that really got a lot of response. I got for, I could see from online. Um, I, I guess if you could sort of pinpoint, what do you think attests to that? Like, what do you think is the like you said the anthropomorphic ants, you know, hugging in the middle of the ring? What what sort of led people to uh, you know feel I think, this way? I think that. Um, Despite the attention spans of wrestling fans in 2015, almost to the 2016, a lot of wrestling fans, specifically a lot of Chikara wrestling fans, appreciate a long-term storyline and a slow burn. And this uh, Fire Ant Soldier Ant burn is really three or four years long. I mean, 
Um, they debuted in Shakar on the same day in 2006, nine and a half years ago. They debuted on the same day. They won the championships 2008. They won King of Trios 2011 together. Uh, but they're they're kind of splitting and and inevitable hopeful coming back together. That had been you know that's that's a that's at least a three year story there and um, a lot of you know being in our home market of Philadelphia, being a big show, being in the arena. A lot of our long term fans were there, and they I think helped with a lot of the casual fans. And I mean, you'll have to watch the match for yourself. But there's there's some really legitimately touching moments. Um, it's strange, but like I, I've been around this and I'm a part of this and I had goosebumps watching it. Like it's, it's, it's really powerful. Um, if you know what's going on and even if you don't, it's entertaining cause you're watching dudes dressed as ants, like, you know, hug and stuff, uh, and, <laughs> and do crazy athletic things. But, um, uh, I think ultimately a lot of the last three years of Chikara have been dark and sad. And I think, uh, we turned a major corner on Saturday of lightening things up a little bit. Maybe there'll be a little more comedy on the show and a little more sunshine and a few more happy endings. Uh, hopefully we shall see, but definitely uh, I don't think anyone went home. It's a testament that we've been making a concerted effort just to shorten our shows, to make more, be more compact and play to short attention fans and get in and get out, uh, especially for our younger fans. Uh, been trying to shorten our shows to two, two and a half hours. Saturday show, just with all the storylines involved, uh, ended up going over three and a half hours. Um, so, you know, we started about 7.05. By the time Princess Kimberly came out to cash in her golden opportunity, it was like 10.45 or 10.50. Uh, and no one had left. And when her music hit, and then eventually when she won the title, it was among the loudest pops I've ever heard in a Chikara ring. And I've been in the ring for a lot of the big moments. Uh, so that's a testament to something too. Like, yes, it was a long show, but I don't think anyone left feeling they didn't get their money's worth. And, you know, this event costs as much as all the rest of the events. It doesn't cost more than the, the smaller shows, like uh, all fair pricing and it can be pre-ordered now. And like I said, with any luck, um, uh, you'll be watching it this time tomorrow night. We'll see. I know our editor's working very hard. Awesome. Very cool. And he's, a, he's a perfectionist too, which is frustrating when you want to rush things, but in the grand scheme of things, you, <laughs> you can take a step back and appreciate that wanting to put out the best possible product is, is probably good for business. Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, going to also that, that um, I guess that point of storytelling and, and the connection you could say some of those long-term fans had with that, that storyline. Uh, uh, obviously the Chikara model, I guess, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is definitely a, uh, Character based stuff. You have a lot of different, uh, unique uh, uh, characters within your universe. I guess you could say. Uh, do you think that helps in a sense? Because I, I feel like, especially the colony, like they're so synonymous. I feel with Jakara. Yeah. In, in oh the yeah. Sense that, like, they're like. Would, would you say that's the case? Yes. 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 I think that um, the fans have been around for a long time. Have been there with those guys through good times and bad, and they feel as if they they're more invested in someone that's come along, especially because Soul Durant was a Technico for so, so long. And just recently for the last year and a half or so, he wasn't. Um, mm -hmm. And I think people like things a certain way. Like when um, uh, Star Wars came around again and it was like, who's Jar Jar Binks? What is this? Why? Like people just want Fire and Soul Durant to be on the same side. Like that's just, that makes things feel right in the world. So when they weren't, it didn't feel right. It felt different. And someone, you know, put the wrong kind of chocolate syrup in their chocolate milk and it just it wasn't right. And uh, now, you know, everything's right with the world again. And I think there's there's something to be said for that when, when things just feel the way they're supposed to be. And I think that's a good feeling. It's a comforting feeling and it evokes a lot of positive emotion, especially like you said, from our long-term fans. Absolutely. Um, going into, I guess, sort of the, the year that you guys have had with, with season 15, uh, it definitely uh, was a big year for you guys. I mean, uh, uh, your trip to London in the spring, mm -hmm. or, or the UK, I guess I should say, in the spring. Uh, mm -hmm. King of Trios also this year was a huge success. Uh, what do you think, uh, coming off of, of uh, season 15, how, how do you think uh, Chikara is looking? Obviously, because you mentioned that, uh, uh, you know, from the, from the, uh, the uh, reintroducing of Chikara uh, mm -hmm. back in 2014 and, and, and the stuff that you guys are doing now, how do you think the, the company has been progressing? Um. It's uh, it, there there are highs and lows, there are peaks and valleys. Um, we definitely uh, every time we go to a new place, we're well received. Um, I think we did a lot of um, we went to a lot of new places this year. 
people have been clamoring for us to go to Minneapolis for 10 years. We came to Minneapolis. We had 400 fans on a Thursday night, which is crazy. Uh, there's a lot of places left that we want to go. Uh, some are places near where you guys live. Uh, and eventually we hope to go there, but I think we kind of, um, learn from some, not mistakes, but adventures and experiences, um, that, you know, we go to this place, it's going to be great. We go to this place, maybe it's not going to be so great. So I'm not sure we're going to tour as extensively, uh, next year. Um, but, um, I don't know. I think, I, I think because of the challenges of the mortals, there had to be a certain amount of events and, um, uh, when there are, I think we did 32 or 34 events this year. Um, mm-hmm. Inevitably, they're not all going to be must see. Like that's just the way it's going to be. They're not all going to be king of trios. They're not all going to be top bananas. Um, and some are going to get lost in the shuffle. And unfortunately, I think that's what happened. Um, so maybe next year we have 25 solid events because we don't have to have challenge wars. We don't have to have these 90 matches spread out. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I, we, we, uh, if some maybe questionable, not mistakes, but we're going to learn from our experiences. And I think things will be a little more concise and um, on the more fun side next year. We definitely have a, our, our new Wrestle Factory is a place not, not only where the trading centers, we have events in now. And it's really coming together yeah. as a great spot in Philly. And I think, I, I think we're going to be using that a lot more next year. Um, it's like, you know, we don't even take the ring down. It's pretty great. So we're going to be using that as a, as a home base, as like the place to be in Philly a lot more next year. And it's nice because it's way cheaper than the 2300 arena. And uh, <laughs> we, we, we can run it far more often, you know, pretty much we own the lease. So we can run there every day if we wanted to. It's not like you got to, you know, pay the lease, move the ring and make sure the date's available. Like, no, it's, we have a show, you know, like we, um, have to have a doctor there because of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission, but we just we say we're gonna have a show. We have a show. It's it's, it's us. So it's pretty great. We're gonna we're gonna try to to get more out of that next year, I believe. Awesome. And I um I can't remember if it was the last time you were on this show or maybe it was another podcast you were on, but uh, I think you kind of talked in the past about how you know exploring different markets and like the different places Chicago and, and sort of that hit and miss effect of of, of learning which places sort of work and yeah. which doesn't. So. Definitely, I, I guess it seems like, you know, narrowing it down to the places that really do work for you. Guys. Yes, yes, yes. And, and uh, of those places, um, there, are, there are many, but Chicago's great. Uh, Gibsonville, North Klein is great. And we have a really great uh, building and relationship with the uh, people in Haverhill, Massachusetts, which is out of Boston. Um, I know we've already announced events for uh, New York and North Carolina for 2016. And there's more to come. Uh, um, I can't imagine how well the UK tour went, which is definitely a high point of this year was the, the our four day UK tour back in April. I'm not sure if it's going to be next year or when, but I can't imagine we don't n- not go back there ever again. So we shall see, but, uh, but, but yes, I would love to go back there. So we'll see what happens. Definitely. Awesome. I want to give uh, uh, Alex a quick, ch- quick chance if he has any questions, uh, obviously him being the host of uh, Chikar in 15 minutes. Uh, yes. Thanks for taking that over, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no problem. I actually have a couple questions. Sure. Um, just kind of generally speaking, you know, uh, probably no real specific, but what would you like to see happen in season 16? Like, um, even from a general perspective. Uh, for, from a general perspective, I think that um, in the um, getting caught up in the challenge of the immortals kind of inadvertently took some of uh, what made a lot of people fall in love with Chikara out of Chikara. Um, you can't have maybe a goofy match when it's a part of this big, long, serious tournament. Uh, I personally would like to see the... Um, not that Chikara is not fun. It's definitely still fun. Uh, but I think there are elements of it that... that I think we're, we're going to turn the fun... I would like to see the fun dial turn back up to 11. I think maybe it got back to an 8 or 9. 8 or 9 is a lot of fun. But when it goes to 11, let's crank it to 11. Let's let's ex- let's really explore like you know m- more grenades, uh, more uh, more brawls around you know the 24-hour matches that go outside, stuff like that. Like I, I- I'd like to uh, really challenge the boundaries of um, like. In, instead of instead of you know we've always painted with a lot of colors on the canvas if we're if we're painting a picture like let's not even paint on the canvas like I want to come up with more ways to um, 
alter the experience of someone going to a pro wrestling show. Like people that don't know pro wrestling, they think they might know Hulk Hogan. They might know Stone Cold Steve Austin. They might know the rock. Um, that's not what we do. Like people that don't love wrestling come to Chikara shows and love it. And I want to, I want to I wanna turn that up. I want to wackier, crazier, unforgettable things. I want to keep thinking of things that have never happened before in wrestling and either do them or figure out a way to try to do them. Um, and more of that. Just, just like let, 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 let's let's get let's get crazy. All right, I like that. <laughs> that sounds great. Um, and then one other question, and I know you kind of talked about you know Chikara may not be uh, touring quite as much next season, but if there was one place that you guys haven't already gone to, where would you like to see Chikara go to and why? Well, it's funny I'm talking to you guys because uh, in my mind that's a tie between. Austin, Texas, and Los Angeles, California, of the places we've not gone yet. Um, um, I've been to uh, I've, I've been to both places, but the the building that Inspire runs in Austin is pretty much made for Chikara. Um, maybe not terribly soon, but one day it's on my on my proverbial bucket list to make that happen somehow. I'd love to see a Chikara event in that room. Um, it's unfortunately. Not cheap to bring 25 or 30 dudes to a place that requires a plane <laughs> ticket uh, that you can't drive to. Uh, same with Los Angeles. But I think that um, given the uh, a hybrid of the PWG crowd and the Lucha Vavum crowd would really enjoy a Chikara event in Los Angeles. So uh, those, 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 are, those are top two for me. Um, Maybe Portland, Oregon, which is a place I've been that I think would uh, there's probably a market for, but I think Oregon has one of those um, bunk athletic commissions that's a real pain in the butt. So we'll see. But yeah, I'm going to say Austin and LA for now. Okay, well, thank you. No problem, man. Awesome. Uh, going into now moving from uh, the Chikar world, obviously you 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 ref and do amazing things for a bunch of different top indies across the country. Uh, uh, the year's kind of wrapping up, and and you know. Therefore, the year in indie wrestling is kind of wrapping up. Uh, what would you say is, uh, I, I guess just to start in general, what do you think the, the state of indie wrestling is currently? Like, is it you know, better than it once was? Do you think uh, you know, it, there's any aspects where it needs improvement? Uh, uh, what do you think of sort of the indie scene so far? Um, I, I, it's, I'm sure it's better than it once was, but it's probably not as prolific as it once was. I mean, um, it's always been said that the, the – indie wrestling it trickles down from you know the top um when when hogan was hot in like 85 86 87 um the indies heated up like that kind of was like a lot of when the territories were shutting down that's like kind of when the indies rose like the, really indie wrestling as we know it began then um and then when the attitude era was hot 97 98 99 i was a teenager going to shows there were huge crowds everywhere um that's the last time indie wrestling was like truly hot. Um, so it's definitely not as hot as it's ever been. There's definitely like um, probably more shows with smaller crowds. And I think a lot of indies that used to do, used to draw bigger crowds, Chikara included, are maybe seeing smaller crowds now. Not to say the shows are, are worse, not to say that the um, uh, talent is worse. There's a lot of very talented people. And I think, I mean, every time someone gets signed to NXT, uh, Biff Music is a guy that just comes to mind that is fantastic, amazing wrestler. Uh, I really enjoyed working with him. And now he's gone. Well, and like that's a bummer, and that's that's a void on a lot of shows, particularly like Beyond Wrestling up in Providence, uh, Rhode Island. But guess what? That's a spot for someone else to step in. Uh, there's always going to be that next crew. Like when someone, when 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 Randy Orton gets hurt, well now Dolph Ziggler gets more time on Raw. That trickles down all the way down. Like that spot that Biff freed up and evolve and beyond and pwg that's someone else's spot to take now and someone else is going to take it uh maybe they won't be as good at it or maybe they won't be as talented and exciting right away but like there's a ton of stuff going on um i think that we're going to see um uh i think what we've seen happen what, what, what's the, the effect that social media has had on indie wrestling we haven't really scratched the surface of yet i think there's we're going to see a lot more of that um you know feuds over twitter and people filming promos with their phone like i mean that's free <laughs> i mean think of the days where you're printing you're printing up flyers you're printing up posters you were you were tacking them to uh uh telephone poles and all that stuff like 
that, that, that costs money and this doesn't like uh, yeah. a lot more, a lot more of that. And Shakar has definitely been playing around with that, but uh, more so in the future, I think next year and beyond of, of using that, like that is free uh, shorter. This is something where despite top data, shorter events, um, being able to watch them on your phone, um, being able to get them wherever, whenever, like that's the way the world's going. That's, that's, that's how, that's why Twitter is popular. That's why Instagram is popular. Um, (laughs) just being, being able to just make things as compact and simple and easy and affordable as possible. Um, that was a big part of Chikaratopia that you could, you could buy just a match. You're like, I don't want to watch the whole show. That's okay. You can watch just this match for $2 and have it forever. Um, we were really adamant about that when we were developing it. Um, so yes, I think, I think that's the way I think indie wrestling is definitely not as hot as it's ever been. Um, but it's not in the toilet either. I think, uh, much like maybe Chikara, maybe, maybe this is a rebuilding year and there's a lot of excitement to come. And, uh, um, I mean, PWG's plan is doing great for them. They just, they just have mm-hmm. crazy killer shows in one room. They fill a room. It sells out right away. And they sell a bajillion DVDs. Like, and nobody <laughs> has to ever fly. The guys that run PWG never leave their house. You know what I mean? They, they never have to sleep yeah. in a hotel. Like there's something to that. There's definitely something to that. I, and I think going to your point sort of about social media and that, and those kind of uh, online or, or different aspects of things. I think that's the one thing like I've noticed, at least in the Texas area is that, there's a, I feel like there's few promotions that do understand that social media thing and few, few promotions that under that really produce shows even for you know audiences other mm-hmm. than a live wrestling audience. Yep. Um, and I think it's I, I think that is going to your point. So just the the modern era of, of wrestling and and to what you said, like it's 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 free and I mean to some aspects obviously it's free and you can you know sometimes even reach more people than just than just flying absolutely and stuff like that absolutely i can think something and i can put it on the internet and thousands of people see it within a minute potentially like and that's just me imagine guys that have you know cool cabana has over a hundred thousand followers like it's crazy <laughs> it's amazing it's it's a world that our parents and grandparents could have never dreamt of i think you're gonna see uh fewer um wwe legends on indie shows especially in like bigger cities and on the east coast like maybe in like the middle of no not the middle of nowhere smaller places smaller <laughs> towns you might you know that 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 still draws but i think that's that's becoming more and more of a relic in uh, certain places and would you say also with chikara like in the sense i at, at least in the sense that i get with chikara is like one of the reasons i got into chikara is like just searching like viral wrestling videos and, and yeah. seeing like the grip scene you know stuff like that do you think that's that's as you know much important as anything. I think we've had discussions in the past on the show, you know, viral oh, videos. I think my dog wants like to be that. on. Joking. I think I think my, she wants to be on. So. <laughs> Hi, Annie. She's, yes. she's got opinions. Yes, yes. She's okay, got opinions tell, on that. Uh, tell 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 them what you think. Tell them what you think about viral videos. Uh, yes, I think that's absolutely the way. I mean, a, 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 an old video of Chuck Taylor throwing an invisible grenade in uh, in Connecticut from eight years ago was on ESPN last week. I don't know how and why, but it was. Um, so, and, or even the uh, the recent stuff with uh, Joey Ryan, even. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 And like the the crazy thing about that is like that was probably just a dumb idea they had sitting in the back before the match. Like you can't. There, there's no there's no handbook for how to create a viral video. No. If there was, I would have read it already, and we'd be trying it all the time. Uh, <laughs> um, but like. It just happens. And luckily for pro wrestling in 2016, there's always going to be a camera present. There's always going to at least someone with their phone's going to be present. Like um, it it used to be like, Oh, you know, think of the matches steamboat and flair used to have. And like, Oh, and they weren't even recorded. Like everything's recorded. Now, if something happens, it's going to be online. Why things become viral. I don't know. I'm sure someone studies that. I'm sure someone gets paid a lot of money to study that. Uh, But it's, it's, in my mind, it's, it's just kind of lightning in a bottle. Like it's, it's just going to happen. Um, tons of crazy things have happened that are probably take way more talent than what Joey Ryan did a couple weeks ago. But like, that's just what stuck. That was, that was unique. That got people's attention. Um, mm-hmm. and it makes Jim Cornette probably roll over in his undead grave. So that's great. So, you know, everybody wins. <laughs> it all works out. Uh, going also to the point of, um, you mentioned sort of the wrestler influx with indies where people get signed, but there's always usually a spot coming sure. up. Uh, uh, if you if you can think of going into the new year, is, is there, if there's any wrestlers that you kind of 
have, have gotten to see or whatever you, that you think people should kind of keep their eye on? Uh, who kind of who sticks out for you? I, I do not travel as much as I used to. I will say that, but I really enjoy Team Tremendous as a tag team of cops, uh, Dan, Detective Dan Barry and Bill Card. Have you seen these guys? They're amazing. Um, They're pretty fantastic. Uh, there's a guy in Texas by the name of Keith Lee, who you're very familiar with. Uh, he's great. I was very, very impressed by him last time I was in Texas. He's just so, so strong, and he sings his own entrance song, and I'm very impressed by that. <laughs> um, there's a guy that is a manager for Ring of Honor named Stokely Hathaway. I don't know if you've seen him at all. Mm -hmm. His just presence and facial expressions and, like, he's great. He's really, really great. Um I think Heidi Loveless has only scratched the surface of what she's capable of. She is incredibly talented. She just has a brain for wrestling. I think we're going to be seeing, hopefully seeing her all over the place and everywhere as soon as possible. Um, and um, uh, there's a couple of, of Chikara guys that some of them haven't even debuted yet. Like I'm really excited for the, for the world to see them. I think within Chikara, um, um, I don't think enough people talk about what a great wrestler Mr. Touchdown is. Um, I, I think Juan Francisco de Coronado is criminally underrated. Um, I think hopefully they, you see them in more places doing more things. I think, I think missile assault man, I think we've only scratched the surface of him. I think he's got a lot more to give, um, in, um, the coming months and years and whatever, but yes, the, uh, that's something sort of after me doing this to, to date myself for 13 and a half years now, um, to see these guys come up and remember that some of them have only been doing it for a year or two and like asking for advice and trying to help out with character development. Some of the younger Chikara guys is uh, kind of slipping into like a mentorish role, like is something that I, I've really enjoyed uh, these last couple of years and been able to help and give advice here and there and whatever. Like I really, really enjoy that. And it's, it's, it's fun and it, it keeps like, it's great to still have, have the guys around that I trained with in 2002, the Icaruses and Hollowick and Eddie Kingston's. Um, but um, to, to see this new crop of guys come up and to be able to help them and watch them grow and, it's 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 really exciting and it's very rewarding and it, it kind of is a new aspect of this that I'm I'm, I'm enjoying. It makes me feel young too. Awesome, very cool. Uh, I guess the way I'm going to close this off because we had a discussion about this before the show about because uh, we don't know how to do it with second time guests, but we're going to re. I, I I made the executive decision that we're going to rehash an old question okay. uh, that we used to ask on the WrestleMania no. show. It used to be our big question. So it's growing over there, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Uh, if you, Bryce Rosenberg, if you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you be? Oh, I think I'd have to go with. We're talking about food, yes, Annie. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I would say, I would say, uh, butternut squash. Uh, hmm. I don't know why, but I would say I would be a butternut squash. I feel like I'd, I'd get, I'd get to see some stuff. I'd get to know, I'd get to know some things, and and I'd have a fun name. <laughs> Definitely. Fans listening, read into that I, you will. Um, I feel like I feel like Alex has some more questions. He's got this look on his face. No? I was just trying to understand <laughs> butternut squash. Oh my. I think it's just the last vegetable <laughs> I saw today. It's just it's fresh in my mind. It's like listening. I was listening to ELO when I was walking over work, so I have ELO in my head all night. It's, it's, that's how my mind works. It happens. Uh, well, <laughs> thank you very much, Bryce, for uh, coming back on the show and joining us. Uh, uh, if people Anytime. can check you out or – or check your car pro out. Uh, or if there's any uh, upcoming events that you're going to uh, be on, feel free to uh, uh, plug this is, away. This is kind of this is kind of the winter hibernation. Now we all kind of like mm -hmm. stop and don't do anything for a couple of weeks. Uh, we're all kind of doing like the. There's a lot of uh, actually a lot of publicity and press about Top Banana and specifically uh, Kimberly being the first female primary champion of a professional wrestling company. So. I've done a couple interviews this week. I know she's done several interviews this week. I've uh, some that aren't out yet. So normally after the season's values, we just kind of kick our legs up and wait. But like this week, like, like you said, this uh, normally uh, the buzz from a big Chikara event or weekend goes away in two days. So this is the third day. Tomorrow's the fourth day. Hopefully the events out tomorrow, we can keep this going for a little while, but we're going to kick things back into gear. Uh, Saturday, January 30th, we'll be at the wrestle factory in Philadelphia and we've already announced events, like I said, in New York, North Carolina, and more to come next year. And uh, I'm at Dub Rice is Right on Twitter. And, uh, yeah, ChikaraPro.com, at ChikaraPro on Twitter. Um, once you can pre-order Top Banana now, hopefully it'll be you'll have an email waiting for you with some good news by the end of the day tomorrow. And uh, when you see it, tell me what you think about it. 
uh, tell the world by using hashtag top banana uh, when you talk about that. And uh, yeah, Absolutely. it's always a, it, it's always you're 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 a gentleman and a scholar. I don't I don't, I don't think your audience knows what a great what a great dude you are. Uh, it, um, drove some 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 gentlemen that were acting like babies around in Texas and uh, <laughs> let us crash in your hotel room. It let me commentate with you. You're you're a good man, and I, I don't I don't think the world the world is, uh, knows that yet either. So uh, I was going to say, keep, uh, want to keep an eye on is you as well. Thank you. Uh, so I was going to say some gentleman that may be part of a, a, a specific club of sorts. Yeah, a specific club. Yes, yes, yes. Next year we're going to Houston, so I hope you're ready for that. Houston's next year. Andy Dalton's hooking us up with tickets. Houston, Andy Dalton's hooking us up with Astros tickets. You already told me that. That'll, that'll, that'll do. We'll, 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 we'll get to work on that. That'll be fine. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much but for having again, me. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. No problem. Uh, uh, we're going to take a quick break here. We'll be right back uh, with more uh, after we take this look at everything that happened this week in Sorgatron Media. We'll be right back. Have you it, interacted with the train in such a way where you had to run alongside it for any reason? Had to? No. Did? Yes. Ah. Do you have to have the little A thing for them to deliver on? Yeah, do I have to put like a little like Amazon <laughs> square? Yeah, you do. She picks it up. Yeah. She picks it up. Yeah. yeah, it lands right on the little A. I guess it looks for it. Mm -hmm. And then you pick it up and you take your A inside. So I got to run out back. This is the Amazon landing zone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Years ago, I got to be a part of uh, Team Taz. And one of the things he really liked about me was my promos and creativity and that I had a brand and I made sure everything stayed on brand. And I was trying to think of a way that I could do promos and make them a little bit more interesting. And then we found out the reason we haven't seen front of the show Logan Shulo uh, for the last almost two years is he's been freaking doing an album with Jim Johnston because yeah. the Drifter got a music video <laughs> debut this week, man. Check yeah, it out. Too. Check it out. Yeah. Man. It sounds good. <laughs> All right, Indie Mayhem Show episode 99 rolls on. Oh god, I'm Michael Cole now. Ugh. Uh but with us. So Eamon, Eamon had to had to uh, uh fall out here. Uh but we are now joined by our friend in the mainstream media and the writer of the Around the Indies uh, uh column over at indiewrestling.us. Matt Carlin joins us on the show once more uh representing his Mayhem Club t-shirt available on Spreadshirt in our in our shop nice linked over shirt, from wrestling Real nice quality design right here. If I do say so myself. How you doing, Matt? I'm good. How are you tonight? Good, good, good. Ready to talk some indies. I love the indie Sorg. You do. It's such a happy place. So much he writes about it every damn week. All right, so let's get well. First, well, first of all, Alex, uh, we want to talk a little bit more. So, as we mentioned, you do the uh, uh, Chikara in fifteen minutes or less podcast, which is not your origination. You actually kind of took it over. What's the story behind that? Okay, so uh, back in I want to say that back in two thousand thirteen, uh, as many people know by now. Uh, Takara had their shutdown angle, which started with the ending of their iPay-Per-View anniversary of Never Compromise. And so with the shutdown came absolutely no news of any kind from the official Takara sites. And so my friend Babs, uh, at the time, decided that she wanted to help kind of provide any kind of news that was still kind of trickling in from, like, social media sites and whatnot, because during this entire shutdown angle, you had stuff like the guerrilla wrestling event where they basically had a rally at the, at a skate park that uh, ended with like a wrestling match and the whole thing with a, a fan supposedly being kidnapped, all that good stuff. Uh, then you had like your scavenger hunt throughout uh, parts of Philadelphia, basically. Uh, and then this whole thing kind of leading up into the national pro wrestling. Age. And in the meantime, that not a lot of people were able to get a whole lot of info on the news. And so my friend Babs came up with Chikara in 15 minutes or less. The idea being it's short, it's compact, it's concise, if you will. Uh, just a quick chance to get the news out about anything that was going on at the time, whether it was little things like stuff from social media that were popping up from Chikara stars or from like Condor security and, uh, Teeter conglom conglomerate, which were big portions of the, uh, they were big parts of the whole Ashes of Jakarta storyline. 
And so that kind of, so out of that kind of came this podcast, which was essentially a newscast. And so over time, it began kind of growing in number. Uh, people, more and more people were listening to it. Well, strictly to figure out what was going on. This was like your central news feed of Chikara News. And so that was like a big uh, point for people to come to, to kind of flock to uh, during a time of uncertainty during the season. What we eventually called season 13 in the Chikara world. Uh, and so uh, once Chikara returned, it became a quick, a real quick kind of recap of your Chikara, uh, your past events, kind of a quick rundown of the upcoming shows and then like other various things. And it always included a weekly feature, uh, which was especially helpful for like kind of getting to know uh, various Chikara stars, uh, various Chikara storylines from past years, like uh, there was a feature on King of Trios. And so there was just a lot of, uh, just a lot of, again, central news feed with a lot of other extra Chikara things that kind of helped. And a very, you know, kind of bits and pieces like Bryce was talking about earlier about the uh, this idea that now everyone has, basically because everyone has kind of a shorter attention span now. Uh, or it seems like that, you know, especially in terms of like the, what they consume as far as media and news goes. So this is just that idea of keeping things concise in order to make sure that people got the news that they needed and kind of heard a little bit more about Chikara. Uh, this is this was in many ways a good jumping on point for people that were maybe not sure what Chikara was about uh, and just, you know, kind of going from there. It also grew into an interview series called Chatting with the Chikarami, uh, in which she began uh, interviewing various members of the Chikara fan base, known collectively as the Chikarami. Uh, I had the honor of getting to be a, one of the guests on on that particular series myself, and uh, other people like Kevin Ford from PW Pondering, who also does a very good job with the Viva Chikara podcast. Just again, you know, it, the important thing is that just because Chikara is such a, a niche a niche project uh, product, and what's already a, a niche of uh, indie wrestling. So that's essentially kind of Chikara in 15 minutes is that central news feed. Uh, and kind of a, a nice, in some ways, it's a, a nice, helpful introduction of the Ch- of the Chikara world. That's awesome. And, 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 and again, Chikara is like a, a group that's really used uh, YouTube, social media, as we talked with Bryce earlier. Um, really, you know, I mean, that's how a lot of us got the, the, the attention. You know, it was something different, right? And, you know, plus their style on top of things. Um, yeah. I, I think that's really great that there's this kind of fan motivated movement. I know between you and and Eamon, I know Eamon was fascinated with the shutdown angle and, and everything that was going on there and putting the pieces together. And he went for the ride, and just like you did. Um, and I think uh, I, I think that's really cool, and I think they accomplished something. Um, it's it, it's 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 kind of funny. What what uh, just looking by the way at the uh, John Cena Instagram of all places, and uh, there was a good quote on there that caught my attention. That if I if I recall it correctly, and I want to double check, kind of applies here. Um, Art is anything you can get away with. From Andy Warhol, right? and I yeah. think I think uh, I think Shakara got away with it there, and yeah. uh, with the, with that shutdown angle and everything. And uh, whatever the reasons, maybe it was the financial thing, whatever. But uh, I think it's something cool. I think it's something that a lot of wrestling fans will remember. Like, oh, that one time when that wrestling promotion did that, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really, really awesome. So uh, that's great. I, I lo- it's awesome that you're a part of it now. Um, so, um, uh, you know, and, and again, if people want to check it out, uh, the website is chikarin15.com, right? Awesome. Go check it out. And uh, I'll look forward to see what else comes out from uh, Obsessed with Wrestling over there as well. Occupy Road. Pro, Damn it. Pro Damn it. This is my this night of, here to correct This you. is my Night That's of right. Legends, Night of Champions um, um, thing in my, oh, after so many years. Uh, no. Okay. Screw the other place. I, I don't even know if they're <laughs> around anymore. Um Occupy Pro Wrestling. Power to the Smarks. I, that's if you hear me like kind of start and stop and say Power to the Smarks. That's why um, uh, when I'm going through things. So sorry about Better that. than Power to the Smurfs. Power to the Smurfs. Thing. Plus your stuff over here is blue, so it doesn't help. <laughs> All right. No, no, you had something else going. So, uh, you know, I know you, you mentioned, and thank you, you listen to Basics Ergonomics, we're talking about our new setup where we're using 
all these little doodads and, and doing something new to, to switch RWA. We're going to be doing the same at IWC this weekend for video production. Now, you also had, you started sending me a message that the struggle is real uh, as you started um, diving into uh, figuring out how to do video for a local wrestling promotion. First, what's the group that you're working with? I, I don't, I'm not sure okay. if I caught. So, yeah, so I'm working, so I've, I started working with a group called Orange County Championship Wrestling. Mm-hmm. OCCW for short. Um, I would direct you to the website, but there's been some weird uh, redirects going on with it. But they're on Facebook. That's probably the best place to kind of find them at this point. But uh, basically, this kind of started. I went to a show at like the end of September, and just I just happened to catch a little bit of footage on my phone. And uh, this is actually a really funny story to keep telling because. Uh, goes into like the, all the technology stuff that I love doing. Uh, I just, you know, I took some uh, videos and a couple of photos with my phone while I was at the show, you know, just enjoying what I could. And then kind of by the time I got home or maybe the morning after, and I think, Thor, you, you might know more about this than I do even, but like uh, Google Photos, the app for, you know, kind of the, the default app they have for that, mm-hmm. creates like little movie clips from videos that you shoot at like one particular place in time right and so it was the weirdest thing so i had a video in my uh library on on google photos with a little bit of like sort of kind of stock music or whatever and little effects added to the video and it was really cool so i just i posted that like on my on the occupy pro wrestling youtube channel and the promoter uh john de la o actually like he, he took a look at it and he really liked what he saw so he and I talked about uh, actually just doing like a, a 30 second TV commercial, uh, try to shop that around the local station. And so I worked on that. I actually, I actually got a good, I had a good excuse to get back into using Premiere Pro for, for the first time in a while, just uh, putting together the clips, the original clips I had from my phone, and then kind of using that in After Effects to kind of create, you know, a 30 second TV commercial uh, in high definition. Um, and then I, I gave that to him and I got, got paid for the job, which was nice. And it's been <laughs> nice to kind of build up a portfolio from that. And so I've also started working with him because we've been talking now about trying to do some other video projects. So I shot as much as I could from the last show that we had back in November 28th. Uh, and then kind of on top of that, we've been talking about other projects like possibly a weekly TV show for the local station because there's still value in trying to find something on the TV for, for wrestling. And so it's kind of coming up with those concepts. And then just, again, you know, as you joke about this, as you know, we joked that the struggle is real. Um, <laughs> that's why you need a, a live video switch because I, I finally did a full match where I edited the video. <sighs> <laughs> so many angles and I, and the, the the great thing about this is that it was all basically me shooting from a hard cam uh, my SL, uh, actually my mom's SLR mm-hmm. uh, shooting from uh, yeah shooting from the SLR for the hard cam shooting for my little 720p camcorder for the second uh, camera and just you know one, one man two cameras and uh, just and you know, just trying to get something put together. Mm-hmm. So the clip being shown is a nice little moment that I I enjoyed very much because uh, we had a guy in, in the thread called uh, Bulletproof, and so he wears like a bulletproof kind of vest kind of deal. And it was just funny because it was one of those ones that's like I can't get a hit on him because he's oh he's bulletproof. And on a side note, I've actually I got it. I was going to upload it sometime this week. Hopefully, I managed to get a, like a better clip of it now that i actually finished editing the match itself so it looks a little i want to say a little more polished but you know it's one of those things where i just wanted to get that out as quick mm-hmm. as possible because another thing we kind of talked about with rice was viral videos and like how do how do you get a video to go viral you know that's something that not that you there's not really a formula per se no so it's just one of those things that and even you kind of talked about that's why you know you do live video switching so you can get a full product out there as soon as possible with people talking about it. And so it's just been a lot of fun working with the local promotion, uh, especially because 
with my kind of current situation, I don't really drive. I have to take public transportation. Going to this show over in Los Alamitos is basically about an hour bus ride from home, which is nice. And so it's, it's nice to have something this close. It's not necessarily at the same level as a PWG, no. but I, I, I like to believe that it's kind of getting there. At least it's enough that this past show, there were a lot of people. Like, there were a lot of people. It was almost a full house mm-hmm. at this little American Legion Hall in Los Alamitos. And John even kind of talked to me at one point. He's, he basically attributed a lot of it to him sharing that video that I had made of, like, the 30-second kind of uh, the 30 second spot that I made for him. So it's just been a lot of fun to kind of have that little entry point in, in the world of professional wrestling. And I just, that's awesome. you know, it's, it's the things that I love, you know, that's great. Uh, so I, I love that. I love that the, the chance Google photos thing, cause I've had some really interesting stuff come out of Google photos too. And, uh, that, that led to this and, um, and, 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 and luck, luckily for me, I, I was, uh, very deep in video editing before I got to pro wrestling. Um, mm-hmm. So, <laughs> it, 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 you know, uh, 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 you know, and I know you don't have uh, kind of a long, long video experience. Um, so, um, but, but I, I think, uh, you know, you're getting concepts and stuff. They're, they're really kind of been there. And, and look, I mean, you, you weren't using much to do it, you know? I mean, uh, yeah, I just spent all this money to do X, Y, and Z, but it's still not the $10,000 unit that we're using down at this other place. Right. right. Um, right. and even for you, you were using the, 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 the things you, you described, which are, you know, mm-hmm. just what you had on hand and you got to start somewhere. And, and, and it's a, it's a kind of a theme that I talk about over on basics ergonomics. You got to start from something, you know, and, and work and improve. And, and, and as you go say, well, we need a new hardware you know mm-hmm. and, but you're learning how to work with what you have and you grow and you grow and you grow and you iterate um yeah. and, and especially for a promotion like this that's just kind of picking up steam a little bit i think that's great and i hope uh hope you guys uh have some 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 decent growth from being able to put it out there online so all right well from that to locally well no, from locally for you out in california <laughs> california man i need to swing down your way next time i'm out visiting the in-laws i know that's like a three hours away but <laughs> still worth it yeah, at least it's the time zone right <laughs> um but uh, uh uh from there locally iwc international wrestling cartel want to give them a shout we're going to be there uh Sorgatron media will be uh, uh doing doing the live switch as we discussed uh for winner takes all the big end of the year show for them uh pretty big stuff they're gonna have a lot the first ever ladder match for the uh uh uh, heavyweight title um guy you know guys you may have heard of uh friends of the show john mcchesney taking on jimmy nuts in that match and uh title versus hair dylan bostic andrew palace so many friends of the show raylan uh and marty bell of tna taking on Britt baker and angel dust um and a kiss versus restraining order match vip joe rosa jimmy demarco plus all the rest of the stars of the iwc international wrestling cartel iwc wrestling.com if you're in the area as we said the dvd should be all all hoping uh available uh as early as sunday night typically uh if you want to go see what uh that's about um also uh i i got it so you know long time listeners know jimmy demarco um I know of Jimmy DeMarco and 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 kind of how how he rolls. Well, he's in you know kind of kind of having a a a, a deal with uh, this this uh, wonderful young lady who happens to belong to somebody else. Hence the kiss versus restraining order match. And I'm not gonna play any music because I don't want to get uh, 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 any dings from uh, YouTube. But there's this wonderful music video that's out there. The All I Want for Christmas, and, and I think there's another version floating around as well. If you go to uh, IWC's YouTube page. Um, one of the finest pieces of film magic that I think I've ever seen in pro wrestling. Um, I, I, I recommend it. Jimmy D, all I want for Christmas. Um, I think you'll get the emotion of what's happening here in this, in this wrestling angle. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, so go check it out and yep. Yep. I think you get the idea if you're watching us on video, it gets interesting. Um, so go check that out. IWCWrestling.com. Matt Carlins, you you take us on yeah, a buddy. journey. You take us on a journey every week um, around the Indies, which I know has been getting uh, uh, getting around actually um, a, a lot of fanfare uh, recently. I've been seeing out there for it, um, and I know you're the one that helps me keep in touch uh, with this. 
Uh, we talked a lot about Chikara, which I know you. Yeah, can... it's usually it's usually me blowing up your phone with a text message. Did you did you check the column yet, sort? Did you check the column yet? Did yeah, you it's watch usually this like, video? Did you like, watch this like, video? I think I sent you like three or four texts about this one video. Monday night, Tuesday, he's like, "You gotta watch the video. You gotta watch the video. Make sure you watch the video." I was like, "Why? You you you, you even you, you're already setting up. This is the best of the weekend, and then you go and say this is the best of the best that I laid out in the weekend." Um, I know it's like the, my my pick of the week. Hey, that's what I, I, I love. Like, you know, I don't get a chance to participate in all the all this indie, but between like I even loved sitting back and listening Alex and, and Eamon sit, you know, just you know, BS with Bryce tonight. You know, I'm just like, I don't have the time again, Chikara. I love Chikara, but I love that you guys can just roll with it. And and we have people do that. And everybody's just looking in different places. Uh we're all listen, there there's there's gold out there, guys. And we're all looking under different rocks for it, and 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 we're able to pull it all together here in one place. I think that's a really cool thing going on. Shakar um, is like the island of indie wrestling that is just <laughs> completely to itself. Like everything else, did, did you see when you're like kind of like scouring the results uh, from the indie wrestling? Everything makes sense. Oh, there's this guy, and he he was in this town. And he went to that town, and then he's on this town next weekend. He'll be at this place. And then you check like the Shikara results and it's just has no relation to anything <laughs> else that's happening. They're, all, so, they're doing their thing. <laughs> they're doing, they're doing all their own wacky stuff. And, um, and I, you know, I, it could be a tough, to eat an ice cream. What? It, it could be a tough nut to crack <laughs> sometimes, which is why it's awesome that Alex is out there, uh, creating another gateway for people to get into it because everyone who gets into it loves it. Awesome. Uh, so, so what else happened that didn't involve ice creams this weekend? All right, pick of the week, Sorg, mm-hmm. um, has to be um, from Absolute Intense Wrestling. Um, they were um, up in Brooklyn, Ohio, and they main evented with Grado versus Tracy Smothers. Oh man, that's a hot show! <laughs> and that is an indie dream match. If I were wow, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, there's some audio on this clip, and yeah, so Grado, Grado decides he's gonna sing some Drake for everybody before the match, and Tracy Smothers oh. listens to it for about 15 seconds, and then just comes over and wails him. <laughs> Tracy is not a Drake fan at all. Oh, oh I'm sorry no. about that. Um, oh, there's no. a second angle on this. I only used the one clip. I don't want to overdo it, but there's a second angle where a wide angle of the ring and you can see Tracy Smother just standing with his arms across his chest for about like 15 to 20 seconds while Grado just like does the whole routine like spins around he just he turns his back and Tracy Smother just goes right after him yeah wow. kudos to that one um, AIW on their Twitter account sword ran a poll um, going into the weekend who is the best active wrestler on the independence Tracy Smothers got 65% of the vote and Tracy Smothers got 35% of the vote. So with 108 votes, by the way, <laughs> with all precincts reporting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's a professional right. word. Let's do um, one more video clip. We got to show this um, steal from tier one, uh, tier one wrestling um, deer park, New York back on Friday. And uh, there was a six-way elimination match. Um, and I'm going to read off these names because i am got to be honest with you folks. I don't know all these guys off the top of my head. Ace Romero, Jeremy Leary, Shane Saber, Steve Scott, Travis Gordon, and the incomparable intergalactic Space Monkey uh, had a six-way elimination match. And Sorg, i got to be honest with you, oh. if we're going to run this video, I don't even know which one of these guys it is. But one of the dudes decides he's going to climb up and just hang from, like, the structure beam, like the cross beam in the arena. He's hanging from the ceiling, and you're watching this guy hanging from the ceiling as a couple other guys do dives off the top rope. And eventually, this fella finally kind of, like, lowers himself down and drops down. He actually drops from the beam and like lands feet first on the top rope and it bounces down into the ring. And I think in his own perfect world, 
that he intended to land from the girder, drop down, bounce off the top rope, and do a somersault dive onto the guys who are on the outside of the ring. Because right after he bounces back into the ring, he springboards back up onto the top rope and he somersaults over into the ring. That's crazy story. And um, it kind of goes to a point I think I was telling you while we were off the air, is that when you climb that high during a wrestling match, there's really – you, you kind of the plan has been thrown out the window, you know, and it really, it applies to all levels. So even whether you're an independent guy and you're climbing the, the, the girder of the roof of the tiny arena that you're in, or if you're say, um, Kalisto and you decide, I'm just going to climb this elimination chamber all the way to the top and whatever happens happens. And, you know, it's, I don't know to be honest, you know what they, Tier one wrestling had a better outcome than uh, WWE did um, at the Elimination Chamber months back. If you guys all remember how that played out, but hey, you know what? <laughs> what would you guys say about art? <laughs> it's what you can get I away would, with. <laughs> hey, I would just like to point out. I just got some breaking news. Hmm. Uh, Tier one will not be allowed to uh, wrestle in that venue again after doing that. No. Oh no! <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not- oh, good. that's good to hear. <laughs> like that was that was the last show that Tier One got to do, and had to take the victory. I believe it. Um, so we have time for one more. Go for it. All right, go down to the bottom here. Joey Ryan was at it again. Oh no! In uh, freelance wrestling in Chicago, uh, he was in a match with a uh, Sally Stitches. No one does intergender quite like Joey Ryan, and surely you know that his penis was going to come into play on this one. Um, can you fire this up for yeah, us? Yeah, we'll tomorrow? bring it up, guys, for the video format uh, here. If you want to watch this in video, and if you're familiar with what's happened the last any time, you know what? You just don't mess with Joey Ryan's manhood. And Sally Stitch has learned the, 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 the hard way. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess I guess we can expect to see Joey Ryan – Every night, this is his thing. Is Dong oh, is taking on the world? I'm I'm glad it's someone like Joey Ryan who's like a, a true veteran, a true professional, um, who 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 recognizes okay, my my Dong is over, and we're gonna go with that. <laughs> so, he's gonna T-shirts. That's he's gonna have yeah, the most happen to a nicer guy. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, he's gonna have the most uh the most over penis that's not in porn. Yeah, he may be over than a lot of other penises that are in porn. Actually, now <laughs> I'm thinking about. It. Oh, that's so amazing. Val Venus is not gonna be happy about that. Oh no, he's... Joey Ryan's no, no. dong lays down for absolutely no. <laughs> <laughs> undefeated um all right matt thank you so much and thank you so much for providing the around the news there's so much more there are other videos other results other things you should know about about what's the kind of the air of what's happening in the indie wrestling over the weekend um that's at indie wrestling.us as well as this show is re- reposted over there as well uh check out all the past interviews uh that we've been doing uh you know talking about everything from rpgs and to 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 what else whatever else um thank you so much matt carlin's at mainstream matt and he also does a weekly column over at wrestling show.com new stuff coming up later this week sort bum, bum, bum. and of course alex cars has been our uh chikara man uh uh in in, in the chikara man in charge um of sorts uh and i don't know bryce may know a little bit more than you in that area i'm not entirely sure uh but you never know i think he put him through his paces tonight <laughs> uh, it, was, it was great being on the show. Um, you know, it was great getting to talk to Bryce, and it was great, you know, talking about indie wrestling. Awesome, Just awesome. Times. Go check out chikarain15.com if I got that right. And not obsessed with wrestling, uh, <laughs> powertothesmarks.com is his other website as well. Great stuff over there. And uh, go check out that video. We're playing a little bit on uh, on the show here uh, from Orange County Championship Wrestling. Uh, so, and uh, check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to us on all the different formats, Mayhem Show on the Twitter and Facebook and the Facebook group group for Wrestling Mayhem Show. And uh, and thank you so much for joining us. We got up the big number 100 Christmas, Christmas end of year special. I want to be joined in studio with the sexy, talented dudes, the STDs. 
Um, whichever configuration of that that may show up. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hope you join us here live at sorgatronmedia.com or live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Um, I'm hoping 11 p.m. Eastern time next week, and we'll take a little bit of a break for a few weeks after that for the holidays. We'll see you guys next time. Support indie wrestling. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.